Hello, welcome to Train Signal. This is the Managing Audit Collection Services lesson in the System Center 2012 Operations Manager Training Course. So, what is Audit Collection Services? Well, when you think about it, Operations Manager is not just another pretty face when it comes to throwing graphs and charts on the screen. Instead, Operations Manager can play an integral role in the security of your organization because it picks up where the event log leaves off on a local machine. On a local machine, security events can be captured for later auditing in the event of a potential breach or if there's something suspicious going on in the environment. Unfortunately, local security event logs can be deleted, thereby leaving attackers or those that are suspects with the ability to cover their tracks from an event log standpoint. When you deploy audit collection services, those logs cannot be deleted by a user. Further, from a capacity perspective, local security logs can fill up. In fact, every local log has a predefined limit after which it'll start over again and start overwriting events. Audit collection services event logs have as much disk space as the SQL Server is given. So if you throw 50 terabytes at the SQL Server, Audit Collection Services has 50 terabytes of space to write event logs to. From a centralization standpoint, all of your local security log files are distributed across the enterprise. All of those log files exist on individual desktop PCs. ACS-based event logs are stored centrally in a dedicated database. On a number of levels, Audit Collection Services can help an organization from a security perspective, but it can also be a significant help in meeting regulatory compliance requirements as it relates to security. There are three components in ACS. One is a forwarder. When enabled, the software agent deployed to a managed server, the forwarder forwards events from that managed server to a defined ACS collector. So this is basically the system that you're watching is the forwarder. The collector is an operations manager management server charged with listening to forwarders and then sending events on to the ACS database. So in this case, the management server plays the role of middleman. It collects the log files from the managed clients and places them into the ACS database. And finally, the database is the central location to which all ACS events are written. And it's a separate database from the regular Operations Manager database. To make this stuff work, on the forwarder, we have to simply enable the audit collection task. On the collector, which is the management server, it must be an Active Directory member, and we have to deploy MDAC. And there's a link you see on your screen if you don't have that already installed on whatever system you plan to use for ACS collection. And on the database side, we have SQL Server 2005 and 2008 support, and Microsoft recommends the use of the Enterprise Edition if you're gonna use ACS. There are three primary deployment steps with ACS. One is make sure you understand the process. There's a complete discussion of audit collection services at the link you see on your screen. Next is to deploy the ACS database and collector. And to do this, we'll use the Operations Manager 2012 media. And then finally, enable audit collection forwarders. And we'll do this for each system that we want to monitor the security log for. And we're going to deploy audit collection services into the environment for Global Mantics. We're going to use the Operations Manager server we've been using as the ACS collector. We'll use the same database server itself that we've been using as well. And then we'll enable auditing on DC1 and File1. So to get started, I'm over on my Operations Manager server. We have to kick this process off from a management server. And you can see I'm on SCOM 12-1. I've also inserted the Operations Manager installation media into the DVD drive of this server. And under optional installations, one of the items you'll notice is Audit Collection Services, which I just tapped to begin the Audit Collection Services Collector Setup Wizard. So we'll simply click Next to proceed through the wizard. 
We're going to create a new database because we don't yet have an ACS database to work with. Next, we're asked for the name of a data source, and we're going to call this Ops Manager AC. And that's the default. The default's perfect for this. It just stands for Operations Manager Audit Collection. A data source is a way that Windows knows where to find a particular database when it needs to find it later on. Our remote database is going to be SCOM-SQL. That's what we've been using all along in this course. We're using the default instance, so we don't need to worry about providing an instance name for the database. That's only if you install multiple copies of SQL Server on the same server at once. And we'll keep the default database name of Operations Manager AC. Now, because we're running the same trusted domain as the database server, we're going to use Windows Authentication. If we were running outside a trusted domain or some other scenario, we could use SQL Server Authentication, but for our purposes, Windows Authentication is just dandy. I'm going to tell it to use SQL Server's default data and log file directories. I don't need to worry about providing those separately. We're going to let SQL Server manage that for us. Just like everything else in Operations Manager, there's ongoing maintenance that happens with the database. The Audit Collection Services performs the database cleanup, basically, or maintenance, every morning by default at 2 a.m., although you can change this time by clicking the drop-down and choosing a different time. Now, it's better to let databases do their cleanup in the middle of the night when things aren't quite as impacted as they would be during the day. So we'll change it to the 3 a.m., and we'll keep the default of 14 days of events in the database. Bear in mind, Audit Collection Services is going to be a huge database in a large environment. The more data you keep, the huger that database will be. So 14 days of the default is a good start. We're going to use local timestamp format. You can also use universal coordinated time, but it's really six of one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, local timestamp matches everything else Global Mantix does, so we'll simply stick with that. And now, ACS is going to create everything we told it to do in theory. Now, this process can actually take a bit of time. It's just asking me for a login to the SQL Server, so I'm going to simply click OK. So we'll click finish. So what's next? Next, we start the console. So we go to the start menu and choose the operations console. And this opens up a console that has probably become all too familiar. And we are interested in what we have at the monitoring area. So we're going to scroll down, and we're looking for Operations Manager, Agent Details, Agent Health State. Now the two servers we're interested in are File 1 and DC 1. We want to enable collection services on these servers. So I can use the Control key and multi-select those two servers. And then over here under Health Services Tasks, I want to enable audit collection. You're going to see those two servers appear at the top of the screen. And then I get this task parameters item. Now we haven't seen this before, but this is a parameter that will be passed to the client when it enables the audit collection services. So it's important we get this right. So we're going to choose override. And we're going to tell it that the name of the server that we want to have these audit collection tasks submitted to is SCOM 12-1. That is the name of our collector server. And then we'll click Run. And then we'll wait for a couple of minutes or maybe one or two seconds and we'll see that this item was successful. So we have a successful return of the task to enable audit collection services for file one and DC1. And that concludes our demonstration. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.